everyone and welcome back to the Morning Edge webinar. We're going to get started on our uh, bias chart. Um, so we did have our bias chart support yesterday. I think it's been played for a couple of days. It's 525, which is where they ended up holding here on the market. Right here, it's the 525. Obviously, the 7th range bearish. The risk is, as I mentioned, um, is that uh, for the last couple, for the last, over the last week, even as the cash dollar has has continued to move higher, with U.S. shields moving lower, the euro has has fought those moves, you know, lower. So um, we're going to go on and uh, take a look how this stands. Uh, but the risk is going to the meeting. Hey, we're, we're in a in a tricky situation. I think uh, I think you're going to see some reasonable two way action. Um, one of the things that we also have, obviously, tomorrow's NFP and on the backdrop of, of the strong ADP, uh, which was just a blowout number, uh, is obviously going to put greater emphasis on the FOMC to raise. But at this point, it's almost priced in as an inevitability. So it might be a counter thing where it's, you know, at this point now, buy the rumor, sell the fact. So I think uh, <clears throat> just as one strategist, uh, the lady, I can't remember her name, out of Frankfurt, was stating she thought the ECB meeting was going to be far more important because of that same reason. And um, yeah, I mean, I've already been saying that, Ben. He says, hey, Polly, the dollar's been on a nice rally, but the euro has held. Surely the market's pricing in too much for Draghi to settle after the news. Um, <clears throat> well, the, the euro, even since last week, I mean, the euro should have been a whole lot lower. And we even covered one story when one gentleman was saying, God, if you'd have told me that, that uh, <clears throat> we were pricing an 80% chance of the FOMC you know, raising, we would have been, we, he would have thought we'd have been well below 105, which, like I said, it will, will can't go, like uh, Blake Pipsar used to say, well, can't go down, must go up. Uh, and it's not like the first time either because last Wednesday we saw the same thing with the cash dollar index making new highs, yet the euro holding up like a champ. Remember we talked about it already going over that several times and we thought we'd get a move towards the 450 and um, we'd get a bounce off of the 484 when it gets down there. Heck, it didn't even make it to 484. It stopped and got the bounce from 495, or 494. Uh, so at this point, um, at this point, um, the year is holding up really well, and it, it's set up um, for a nice bounce back. Doesn't mean that's going to happen today or tomorrow, but I think what's going to happen is, in the market, uh, I mentioned this yesterday. I'm not telling you. The market is essentially telling you that despite this, this uh, what appears to be almost an inevitability, and I said almost. Uh, that the Fed would raise rates, uh, you know, in uh, next next week, is that the euro continues to hold up. So once we get past that, the only way the the dollar would keep on gaining, uh, the way I'm looking at it, is if the Fed were to say, hey, they're, they're ready to keep on going. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they're saying, hey, with the pressure seems there, we're going to have to, we're going to stay on top of this. We're not going to let this get away from us. I don't really see the Fed has taken a long time to get to where we're at right now. It took them a long time. It took a lot of heat for a long And, you know, hey, you got to give them props. Look where the U.S. economy is now. They've managed to steer the ship, which went through some pretty troubled waters from 2010 all the way up to where we were just recently, uh, basically 2000, late 2014, early 2015. So... Uh, I'm probably closer to 2015. You know, things are still you know questionable. Um, I think after a rate hike in December, and if we get one uh, another rate hike in March, I think the pet Fed wants to sit back and let it seep into the economy. You know, like I said, you're going to hear a lot of that stuff. Uh, mark my words. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of that stuff afterwards. If they raise, they're going to say, well, uh, <clears throat> you know, it takes six months for, uh, you know, an interest rate to be felt in the economy. You're going to have two in a very short amount of time. And, you know, they are going to make, you know, the thought that the Fed's going to want to, you know, be on pause for that. 
Uh, Pedro says, can you please take a good look at WTI later on the webinar, as oil became quite active yesterday and today. Yeah, we certainly will. We will. We've been talking about adding that uh, already. So let's go and take a look at the euro for right now. So we had support at 525 on our bias chart. Uh, the low for the day was... 525. And we've got the bias pivot here at 568. Now, if something's going to come up, uh, I mean, where the euro goes under pressure. I was looking at 30 minute, the door, you know, we can move lower. But I think the support would come in at 507 for today. Doesn't mean we couldn't get below five, we probably would. But I'm saying good support would come in at 507. So we're going to mark that off on the bias pivot. Although I think the risk is for the euro to go higher because it's held up so well overall. So I think that's a risk, but I think today for support would be 507. I think we could, if we go down there, in all likelihood, they're going to go on and take out the five. And there's some other support at 494. But this would be, if you're, you know, it'd be the market potentially if it, you know, here to say something. I don't think so because it's just not the, the, it's just not the space for it to necessarily move a whole lot lower. You have to say something quite dovish for this to make a move. But if it does, um, I think it would be very herky-jerky you get down there. Um, but I think you'd see some very solid support around 507. So where are we looking at on resistance? The resistance is going to have to be 606. 606. I mean, actually, you know, we can go even higher. I'm going to go and give this for the resistance because we're going to be spreading it out. Um, it's going to have to be this 630 right here. That's going to be resistance because we can go get past this shoot up here and then struggle up here. So resistance on the euro is going to be at 6.30 for today. Obviously, the press conference is going to take on you know its own thing. So we're looking here at... Uh, 6.30 on the upside resistance and 5.07. I mean, we could get past this and we blow past 6.40 and then come back in a little bit. But what I'm saying is where you're going to encounter some decent resistance. And today, generally what we're looking at, you can see like yesterday we picked the 5.25 and that put, held it to the to the pip. Well, on a day like today, you're not trying to pick the – not trying to, when we do the buy chart, trying to pick the very high tick in the or the very low pip. Um, but in general, in, in that area. Well, on a big day like today, just like tomorrow's NFP, you're not going to be able to say, oh, this would be the area that we're really going to find that support right then and there. But when we're looking at an area, yeah, it's going to be 630 on the upside for resistance, and on the downside, we could get past 105, but I think 507, you see a lot of demand here. So let's go and move into the cable. And we had 2140 and 2244. Now the cable continues to remain weak, but this 2140, which you kept here, is a 78%, and it's really holding up really well. And we know, like I said, I've said that before, cable loves the 78%, um, but it's under a lot of pressure. So um, this is decent support, but we're going to have to give it, give ourselves a little bit more room. So we're going to say right there. Ah, 
God, that's not even barely very much. Let's say 2116, just to get, so if anyone's going to get it wrong, this is going to be like your risk right in here. So we're going to say 2116 for the support. Yeah, let's take a look at resistance. Resistance is going to remain the same on the PAL. We're going to keep 2244. Obviously, uh, quite obviously, I should say, it's very bearish. Gold still at 12.660. I think gold could really get a, a, a pretty good firm balance. If you get, if Draghi starts to acknowledge strength, I think gold and euro starts moving higher. This gold could really, could really take off like nobody's business. I mean, it's been really pushed so hard, uh, but we could really start to move higher and see a pretty nice trade in the gold market. Um, let's take a look here. One of the movers overnight has been the crude oil market since yesterday, and Pedro wanted to go and take a look at that. And so we'll take a look at that. We haven't taken a look at crude in a long time. So let's go and take a look at crude. This thing is really falling out of bed, and I haven't done any work on this in a long time. Hang on. Probably have to go back on a further chart, so hang on a moment. So we'll take a look where it stands on a two-hour chart. As you know, I lost all my charts when the computer crashed, so everything is from scratch. So hang on one second. We'll take a look at where we stand on the two-hour chart here. See if we can find something. Well, we come right here to the fifty percent. You see that right there at forty-eight seventy-two. Looks like the low is forty-eight seventy-seven.
There we go. And oh yeah, that's a good support right there. We can come to the 49 of 4. Remember, this is on a continuous chart. There we go. So that's pretty good support right there. And we came right into the 50% too. Or we missed it by what, two cents, I think it was? So very good support there. This market is really, I mean, if you were short, you'd be looking to cover, tighten up those stops, and you definitely would want to be initiated in any position at this point. Now, crude oil has been trading in this tight range like forever and a day. Uh, we can also take a look at. Hmm. And you see that hit the hundred sixty one percent right there. Which is Forty eighty seven of the most recent range. So you're coming to some very good technical areas right there.
okay, so there you go. And then coming in just a very good support there on the crew. So I think we've pushed this thing pretty good, pretty good stretch there. So let's go on and move into the other pairs. Next one up is the Aussie dollar. And uh, Mobi says, uh, I think the Cardinal Crew margin clubs are busy. Yeah, crew can be something else. Um, so on the Aussie, we did come into our areas here the 7515, 7519, 38%. Um, we had 7515 in support. We even dipped just below 75 with 7626 as resistance. Um, so we've already come down here. Now, like I said, we could see a little bit of a dollar. Correction going to next week. Uh, if we get past the FOMC, we're already starting to see the Aussie trying to pick itself up after a pretty good pronounced fall. If we're going to move lower, let's take a look here. Would be right there, 7465. But I think this is pretty good right now here. Um, I mean, for a risk point, people are saying, well, I'm trying to get along, where would be the support? You'd have to say the 7465 right in here. I'm going to mark that off. But we're pretty well overdone at this point. And resistance would be 7609. Still bearish. It's already time for a break, and we'll be back shortly. And thanks for joining us here on the Morning Edge webinar.